Good morning, San Diego, and welcome to Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Eve Nasby, and one of our focuses here on the show is to highlight the best and brightest that San Diego has to offer, and that's our veterans. We want to inspire you and educate you and get you excited about what's going on in here in San Diego. And this show, I promise you, is going to do exactly that. We have a very special segment for you today about dogs and the power of healing in people with PTSD and traumatic brain injury. We've got a couple of testimonials from veterans who have benefited from positive teams here in San Diego. These veterans are going to tell you their testimonies and how these dogs from positive teams have helped them regain their life. And then after that, we're gonna talk with the founder of Positive Team. I went through a lot of hard times before I got stark and I didn't realize and actually didn't want to admit uh, that I had PTS and TBI. Even though I was a corpsman, I thought I could take care of it myself. Um, stuff. From then on, I started uh, going through, went to the VA, started getting treated and realized I had an issue from, on that point, I started looking in uh, salt therapy dogs, and I was like, all right, maybe I need something to help me get out, because I couldn't go grocery shopping. I'd get really aggravated. I'd get anger. Um, I would start fights. I would get into anything. People get up in my area. I just did not want anyone really close to me. I didn't want them invading my space. <laughs> Big sneeze. That's all right. yeah. <laughs> Big sneeze. Come on, back down. So, anyways, long story short, I ended up getting treatment, and I went through, and I started looking online and saying, hey, I want to get a service dog. I knew I needed it. I need, needed something to get me besides my buddies to, for us to go in groups, because that's what we did. A couple of my Marines and me, we actually got together, and that's how we went out and did things. We always had to be in battle buddy groups, and is, that was the way we got our lives accomplished. Either that or I had to be with my, um, at that time, was my fiance, but my wife, uh, and she was a big help. So family's big uh, importance. I come back, I come from a military uh, family. Grew up as a Navy brat. Um, all my family are either Marines, Navy. I got a few Army. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I met Carol, and uh, she wasn't too sure that uh, a PTS dog, because they did mostly mobility. And Stark had been around helping the vets at Balboa. So he had uh, tried to get placed with somebody else, and then uh, his, I mean, his personality and my personality matched up. So we ended up working, and he's helped me to be able to go and start to do normal things. Um, I still have work to do, but I've gotten a lot better. Um, treatment from the VA, obviously, that's still lacking, but that's the VA. So um, from that being said, Stark's been a big help for me. And we go running now. I'm not sitting just at home watching TV. You know, there are those days that I go through it. I have, uh, he helps me with my night terrors. Um, on my honeymoon, I put my wife in an arm bar. And I ended up starting to choke her out. So uh, now with him, he's always there. He barks. He pulls the blanket. He will nudge me. He even licks my hands sometimes. So he can sense before I started to go into a full-on uh, uh, night terror. So I've actually had a couple in the last couple weeks. Um, it's just started to be regular again. And he's actually started to help me pull out of that. So that's a good thing. So service dogs, uh, especially Stark, he's part of my life. He's my family. I didn't know what was going on with my life. I didn't know what was going on with my head that it got so bad that I was isolating myself. I was hiding myself from my family, my friends. And it got bad to the point where I tried to take my own life. And it took a year before before I could realize and it got to that point before I could realize if something 
was wrong. And I went to Kim's office and at the recommendation of many doctors and I told her I needed to do something to help me get back my life and she recommended the program that Carol was doing and I met with a small group with Carol and actually the first dog that I met was Stark and I wasn't speaking until Stark started licking my hand and that's when I told Carol that I wanted my life back. And many months later, I was very lucky to meet my dog, who is now my service dog. His name is Kobe, who is hiding under the table. <laughs> um, we go on many adventures together. Um, and the great thing about him is that he's not even, he's not two years old yet. And he gets up every morning with the most excitement. He jumps on my face. Um, he usually runs around and then pulls out all his toys out of his toy box. Then if I'm taking a shower, I look through the door and I see two little paws waiting for me under the door. And we go to work and he's more excited to go to work than I am. <laughs> and he's what gives me strength to get through the day. Those are very powerful testimonials and I know that you're all gonna wanna meet the founder of Positive Teams and another recipient and hear her testimony. We'll be right back to talk to them. Don't go away. Welcome back to Operation American Dream. We are here with an amazing company called Positive Teams. Carol and Elaine, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. We are so excited that you're here. You have an incredible story, Elaine. You are a Navy corpsman, mm -hmm. and you were in Iraq. So yes. pick up the story from there. Um, did two tours in Iraq. It was actually the second tour where I ended up in a Humvee rollover. A Humvee rollover. Yes. Yikes. Uh, that's where the Humvee flips. Yeah. It was a bad day at the work. The shiny side was down. It was a bad day at work. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad day at work, yes. My goodness. And what happened? What do you remember? What do you not remember? I don't remember anything about the accident, okay. and that's a good thing. Um, I do know, based on the reports, that I was ejected out of the top of the vehicle, the turret. Oh, my goodness. So evidently, I decided that was the fastest way to get out of the vehicle. <laughs> don't know. And I actually don't remember anything. I woke mm -hmm. up in Germany two days after the accident. And what did you wake up to? I woke up to some lady I did not recognize walking into a room I didn't remember being in. Mm -hmm. And there were quite a few things going through my brain. Mostly it was, who the hell are you? Oh, no. And what was she showing you? Because you're a corpsman, so you're in the medical field, and you're lying in a hospital, so obviously something's wrong. Yes. She told me I had had a bad day at work, and I had had a small accident in my Humvee and then promptly showed me the x-ray of my neck that showed me having a fracture of the C2, C3, which is very, very high. Wow. Like um, Christopher Reeves' injury, right? It was the Christopher Reeves' injury. It's actually what we call a hangman's fracture. It's what, it's what happens when the cervical vertebrae breaks off that, that spinous process. My goodness. But you're walking and talking today, so... They put me back together really well. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> And now, how did you get connected? And, and we're glad you're put back together. I think you went through <laughs> occupational therapy and balance therapy and speech therapy. And now you are just, you're amazing and oh. working with positive training. So talk about what you're doing with the dogs. I am actually the veteran services coordinator for positive teams. So basically anybody that comes in, hi baby, um, with any kind of, I'm loving this. <laughs> you're being a goof. Um, basically, anybody that, that comes in to Positive Teams looking for information based on a service dog or any kind of help that they may need, and they've worn the uniform, do wear the uniform, have worn the uniform in any way, shape, form, or fashion, 
Carol just gives them to me as their primary point of contact, so that way they're not getting bounced all around. And not everyone who is a veteran qualifies or should have a service dog. Not every veteran needs a service mm -hmm. dog. Big difference. Mm -hmm. um, some people do need a service dog, some people don't. One of our programs within Positive Teams allows them to test drive a service, what it's like to be with a service dog. And that's a huge undertaking, because not only are you having to now worry about you, you now have to bring the dog's food, the water, right. make sure the dog is properly groomed. A lot of responsibility. Right. It's, it's basically like having a child. Right. So stop. Thank you, baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now, Carol, you started Positive Teams. Yeah, I was co founder in co -founder. 1997. So we've been around. We serve the San Diego area. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of this, the strong military presence in San Diego, we just feel it's our responsibility to serve those who've served us. And so over the years, we've evolved our very different programs. And we do it through our therapy dogs, we do it through our service dogs, and we do it through our veterans actually teaching other veterans how to be better pet dog owners through our emotional support dog programs and we're very proud of our programs and you should be you very well should be so talk about the emotional dog the, the emotional support the emotional support dog program is broken down into two phases phase one is where they learn through one of our one of our therapy dogs what the end result is for behaviors mm -hmm. we also then teach them canine communication, grooming, emergency first aid, all the things they need to be better dog handlers and to be considered the alpha over the dog. Mm -hmm. Phase two is once they have a dog, they then put into practice everything they learned during phase one. Wow. And how long do these phases last? If a viewer wanted to get more information about that, obviously. Each class is five weeks. Mm -hmm. We have five weeks on, we have two weeks off, and it's rotating. So we do a phase one, we take a break, we do a phase two, we take a break, then we go back to phase one. Excellent. And Carol, you've got other programs too, so talk a little bit about that. Yeah, those. we have our therapy dog program. We work with the rec therapist through the health and wellness unit at our department at Balboa Naval Medical Center. Mm -hmm. And we work in conjunction with them uh, for the patients that are active duty, have post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. And it's a community <laughs> reintegration program. In fact, we call it Canine Inspired Community Reintegration. We call it Seeker for short. Okay. But the whole idea is we go to a different public venue every week and we kind of test them uh, going to places that are very difficult, like to Lowe's, to Walmart, some of these difficult places, and they each get to handle a therapy dog, a very seasoned therapy dog, mm -hmm. with the owner of the dog nearby to help out. And we say it's your, your, your chance to test, to check out whether a service dog might help you in public or might be more stressful, mm -hmm. because a dog beside you is going to draw attention to you. For some people right. with post-traumatic stress, this is not what they want. Others find if they look at a stranger, they see a threat, uh, you know, a serious face. Well, if a stranger looks at you and you've got a dog, that facial expression is going to relax and right. they're not going to see the threat. Exactly. So for some, the having the dog it helps them to see uh, strangers more differently. Well, thank you so much for being a part of our show. We're running short on time. For our viewers, all of the information is scrolling across the screen. I encourage you to jump on their website, have a conversation with Carol, have a conversation with Elaine. It's a great program and thanks for all you guys do. Thank you for your service. We are indebted to you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. We will be right back to talk to Brian Sack from Fleet Week San Diego about the thrilling things that are about to come to us in this great military town. Don't go away. Welcome back to Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Eve Nasby, here as promised with one of the most exciting things you will ever do in San Diego, and that's Fleet Week. Brian Sack, Elizabeth Hanley, welcome to Operation American Dream. Thank you, Eve, for having us. You're the executive director for Fleet Week, which is really Fleet Month because there's a lot going on. So talk about the history because maybe some of our viewers maybe have never heard of Fleet Week. Maybe they're new to San Diego. So talk about the history and why Fleet Week is so special here in San Diego. So Fleet Week, we actually have the distinction of being the first Fleet Week uh, in the United States. So in 1935-36 is when wow. they had the World Exposition Fair at Balboa Park, and they had 58,000 sailors and Marines uh, come ashore, and uh, it was known as Fleet Week. My goodness, and now it's, it's evolved, so it's, it's bigger, it's better. So talk about what we might be seeing in these next few weeks of the events that are coming up. So we've got a lot of stuff planned. The Sea and Air Parade, uh, we've got uh, the kickoff that on uh, that Friday of September 10 and 11th on the 9th, mm -hmm. we've got uh, our, our launch uh, party that's going to be happening uh, on B Street Pier. 
uh, to kick everything off from 4.30 to 7.30. Mm -hmm. We'll have uh, bands there, and uh, one of the ships is actually coming in to port at that time, so wow. they'll all be getting off uh, in their dress whites and uh, and coming ashore and being able to greet the public and, and, and talk with them. So, we're, so bring we're, your kids, bring your cameras. Yes. It's a family event. Sure. That's incredible. And I'm sure the news will be there covering that because that's going to lead off basically all our events to start the next day, which is the Sea and Air Parade on the 10th that we'll have a STEM fair. We'll have four ships to tour on B Street Pier. We'll have on Broadway Pier. We'll have all the Marines uh, loading that whole area up. Uh, with with all their fun toys, oh, yeah. and uh, and we'll also have a beer garden there. We'll have uh, all the stuff going on up on the flight deck of the Midway. We'll be seeing Air Central. We have also viewing over on Harbor Island, which there'll be static displays over there as well. Oh my goodness! But wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep so, going. Elizabeth, talk about the STEM fair because again, I want to focus in on this is something that you not only as an adult can come to and enjoy all things veteran, all things military, but truly to bring your kids to to instill that sense of patriotism and of love for our military and the awe that the military brings to us. But talk about the STEM uh, event. So the STEM fair, science, technology, engineering, and math is where STEM comes from. And the military has a really strong interest in that because they want to introduce kids to that type of technology so that they will consider careers mm -hmm. in those fields. And if you wanted to do that career in the military, all the better. right? So there's going to be all kinds of fun toys, uh, Lego robots, underwater robots, virtual reality. And you get to manipulate all of those hands robots. On, hands on, all of on. it. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yep, kids, adults, everybody. It's going to be, the more I hear, the more excited yeah, I am to definitely. go. So yep. we'll have leading that will be O&R, which is the research arm of the Navy, and we'll also have Spay War out there bringing all their toys. So they'll have all their ocular devices, which is the 3D and... Uh, uh, that you can actually see through the glasses and uh, virtual wow. reality so that they'll be able to do that while they're waiting to uh, board a ship to tour. Okay, and then after that, you get to my favorite parts, and that's the Coronado Speed Fest and the Miramar Air Show. So touch a little bit about those. Sure, on the 17th and 18th, uh, Saturday and Sunday, we have uh, the Coronado Speed Fest over on North Island. Now, do we, we get to drive or do we just watch? You can drive. So you can we drive. will have Maseratis, Ferraris. We will have a test drive area with Jaguars and GM will be out there. Okay. Uh, that they'll have their own course and that you can uh, you, you can test drive those. We uh, can drive on a runway. Yes. You will be on That's the tarmac awesome. and runway. Get behind Pretend the wheel. I'm an F eighteen and just <laughs> in a Chevy right now. <laughs> well you can practically climb into it. not an F eighteen, but they have military static displays out there yeah. where helicopters, other aircraft, uh, hovercraft, you can get inside and walk around and pretend I you're the, the pilot. Keys. All right, Elizabeth, well, I want the keys. And then but speaking of the keys, so we've got Corno Speed Fest, you get you can watch You've got vintage cars that are racing and all so kinds of So we do have the vintage cars. We have 10 race classes this year. So you can actually go into the paddock and actually talk to the drivers and, and you know, if you're nice enough, sit in these cars right. uh, yes. that actually yeah. have a, a pedigreed race history uh, that you can go and do that. And on Saturday the 17th, we actually have uh, Gary Sinise and Lieutenant Dan Van, who's going to be playing at, uh, at noon. And with the price of admission, you get that at that no concert. cost. He's amazing. You get that concert. G Gary's fabulous. So yes. we've got that going on Sunday. He's actually going to be the grand marshal of the race. All right. And then after that, we have? After that, we catch a breath. And then the next weekend, we have the Miramar Air Show. This is not Fleet Week. This is a <laughs> glorious Fleet Month. We have the Miramar Air Show. And you've got some of the same planes that will be flying in the parade or the, the first event that will be also flying in the air show. So you've got the F-35. We yeah. do. So we have the F-35 in our the, the on the 10th in our yeah. CN Air Parade. So we will have the F-35. We have the Super Hornets F-18s. We'll have the uh, all of the uh, the helos. The helicopters will be out there. They're running it. We have a demonstration of a water bucket drop. So you know here in San Diego with uh, you know our, the fires that we get. This will yeah. kind of give folks on what what actually that's all about. Yeah. We'll have a, a water rescue as well by the Coast Guard and. Uh, so there, there's definitely, it's geared to have a air asset, a ship, air asset, ship, air asset, ship, air asset, as it goes all the way down. That is so. outstanding. You will never be bored in San Diego. You've Not got in kids, the month of September. Come out. <laughs> I know we've got your website scrolling across the bottom Perfect. of the screen. We can click on it and get more information. And 
plan for the month of September to just enjoy all things military here and in San Diego. And follow us on Facebook because you'll get the latest up-to-date information. We have always things changing. We're dealing with the with the Navy, and they have uh, you know uh, pr protecting us that yep. uh, things come up. So Excellent. definitely uh, uh, follow us on Facebook. Excellent. Brian Sack, Elizabeth Hanley, Fleet Week, Fleet Month, San Diego, my most favorite time of the year. Aww. Some people like Christmas. I like September for Fleet Week. Thanks for being a part of our show. All right, thank Thanks, you. Steve. Don't go away. We're going to be right back with a company that was awarded Best for Vets. So if you or someone you know is looking for work and you're looking for a veteran-friendly company, stay tuned. Welcome back. As promised, we are here on Operation American Dream with the recent recipient of the award, Best for Vets, from the San Diego Chamber of Commerce. We have with us Kevin Cortez and Paul Sosha from Miramar Federal Credit Union. Welcome. Thank you for having Thanks. us. I'm so excited. There's not a lot of companies out there that do what you guys do, and that is focus on, focusing on hiring veterans. It's hard enough to find a good company, but it's even more difficult, I think, to find a company that not only embraces veterans, but really seeks them out to become employees. And I know that's what you did with Kevin, Paul, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But first of all, tell us about Miramar Federal Credit Union. Well, as I was telling you briefly in the break, that um, I've been there two years, uh, came on. The credit union was formed here in 1952, right here in San Diego. Um, it primarily was a savers credit union. We've kind of changed the business model. And we came in, and when I brought Kevin in, I wanted to focus on the San Diego military community. I wanted to be a, another financial resource. And what can we do to differentiate ourselves from our co uh, competitors? So we focused on some of our, we have some great, really unique checking accounts. You can earn rewards. It's an account that actually pays you. Really? Uh, we started a uh, veteran-owned business loan program. Uh, and we found out there's a lot of veterans that their spouses are the entrepreneurs. So oh, we changed yes. the name to Veteran and Spouse uh, Loan Program. Uh, we're working with, uh, I think you've had a group on the Rosie Network. Yes. Um, we're working with them with some of their veterans. But we feel there's a, there's a great need for that. There is. And I think... You know, we have 25,000 veterans that transition out of the military into our community every single year. 7,000 of them stay. And out of those 7,000, many of them are well positioned to start their own businesses. But what's the issue? It's the financing. It's where do I even get started? And so you guys are the perfect opportunity for them to come to you and say, okay, this is my idea. I need funding. And you, as someone who's empathetic and sympathetic to veterans, can help them maybe more than another financial institution would. Yeah, we try. We, when we're, we're learning as we go. I have um, uh, 25 years of commercial banking experience, wow. uh, and that's why I wanted to bring the commercial aspect. Uh, but we've worked with a couple small businesses now because a lot of businesses, uh, unfortunately, the banks are the, the, the commercial lenders uh, of, of the larger institutions. And usually a minimum loan for them is 250000 mm. Most entrepreneurs, uh, new business owners, need 10000 or 5000 or 25000 and, and the only avenue right now are, are credit cards. Right. But you can actually get some funding, but it's very expensive. It can be very expensive. So we're trying to teach them um, through some programs, and we've set up a couple of people with small credit. Uh, we, and I always say it, I like, we try to teach people, even consumers or businesses, to use debt as a tool, not a crutch. Because mm. you use debt to build assets, and you do the same thing in your household as the same thing with a business. Here's what I'm hearing. You're not just an institution to put money into. You're really a veteran advocate. Mm -hmm. And you're an advocate for those veterans who want to start their own businesses to have a safe place to come mm -hmm. and get good advice and get some financial backing. That's exactly what we're trying to do. I love it. <laughs> now, you are also passionate about hiring veterans, hence the Best for Vets Award. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that award and what you guys did to earn it. You want to take that, Kevin? Sure, I'll take that. Kevin so, Cortez, <laughs> Chief yes. Military Officer extraordinaire and helicopter pilot former, former so i actually pilot. wish i was still flying because the 53 is a great aircraft um but that's a story for another time all right i promised dan a, a, a ride <laughs> uh, so what happened with with the categories uh we're members of the san diego regional chamber of commerce and they approached us and said hey there's an award that's available you know and said you know we they spread out to the, the their membership base and we jumped on the opportunity to say yeah we can uh, we can uh be very interested in doing something for this award because Miramar Federal Credit Union is more of a family. Mm -hmm. And when I transitioned a year and a half ago, and I really started to understand that, you know, there's a bigger life than just being in the military in San Diego County. 
When I came to Miramar Federal, I realized it was a family of people associated with the military, whether they're spouses, retirees, mm -hmm. uh, dependents, um, and they grew up in the San Diego community. So having a big military presence here allows a welcoming factor in the credit union. And that was a very attractive feature. When I started working there, I'm like, this, this is a very special place. And it got, and it res the message resonated when we submitted the award because when members come into our credit union, it's more than just a, another financial institution. Mm -hmm. It's a place where our members feel connected with our employees. And I think that's something that sets us apart from our competitors. Absolutely. Now, you as an employee and a veteran, what is it that you like the best? And what is it that you would tell others who are looking perhaps to start a career in banking? Why would this organization be the best choice for them? I think the biggest key most veterans uh, don't understand or need to understand is to stop having fear of the unknown. Mm. I'm, I'm not a financial person. I'm not, I'm not someone who grew up wanting to be in, in finance you industry. You flew helicopters. I flew helicopters. Yeah. That doesn't right. translate <laughs> into the finance world, for sure. How does that work, um, right? But you know what I do? I speak military, and I speak veteran, and I can relate to our veterans that are transitioning because I was able to kind of break the barrier between a local financial, uh, from a local financial institution like Merrimack Federal mm -hmm. and say, look, it can be done. You just have to leverage your assets and your soft skills and understand that you do serve a purpose in the community. Right. Well, if I could say something, too, yes. just with, with Kevin, uh, I've known Kevin before, and, and I brought him in, and we said, let's develop this position, and we want to get involved with the military community here in San Diego. Go out there and find out what programs are out there. And number one, he's found some fantastic programs, and we, we've gotten uh, Kevin very entrenched in them. But not knowing, as he said, the language barrier. I've been in the corporate banking world my, my whole life, been in the business world, never been in the military. Kevin comes from 20 years, well-educated, master's degree, helicopter pilot, uh, comes out, and we never realized, or I didn't, it, the language barrier. It's, right. it's unbelievable, the difference in terms. But this year and a half that we've been together and how much is intertwined and how much should, you know, we're trying to communicate to other people, other businesses, and why you should hire veterans because of this, and you didn't realize. Right. Uh, you don't realize... Um, um, uh, number one, the education that comes out of these these people that have been in the military for quite a while, they, they get, they're very well educated. Or if they only spend four years, the, the, the benefit to a business that you, you show up on time and you don't call in sick, that is a huge benefit. Right. And, There's and a people... lot of those skills and talents and intangibles <laughs> yeah. that you can't, you can't teach. Right. Exactly. So we're running um, out of time. We're going to have at the bottom of the screen how they can get a hold of you. If they're interested in working with you, I think mm. it's a great organization. And... If they're an entrepreneur in the making, oh, they yeah. can reach out to you and get that financial support. Again, Paul, Kevin, thank you so much for being a part of our show today. Great, Thanks thank you. Us. We will be right back after these messages. You've been watching Operation American Dream. Thanks for joining us this morning. We had a great show. We educated, we inspired you, and hopefully you want to hear more. So please jump on our website, operationamericandream.tv. Follow us on Twitter. Look at us on Facebook. We want to hear from you. Thanks for being a part of our show.